so that all may be one. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On this last Sunday of Easter, we've returned to Gethsemane. It is the night before Jesus' crucifixion, and he is praying to his Father. He is praying for his disciples. I have made your name known to them, Jesus prays, whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. They have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, because you, you have given them to me, and they are yours. Protect them in my name so that they may be one, as you and I are one. Jesus' prayer goes on. I protected them. I guarded them. I gave them your word. I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Sanctify them in the truth of your word. For their sakes I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. I expect that there is not one of us here today that cannot imagine Jesus praying for the disciples the night before he is to be crucified. But Jesus is not just praying for the disciples, the remaining eleven Jesus, on this night in Gethsemane, is praying for his disciples, for every single one of his followers. From that night forward until beyond today, Jesus is praying on that night for his disciples. Is there any reason why God would refuse the prayers of Jesus the Son for his disciples? In a word, no. Jesus prayed these words that we, his followers, may be one, as he and the Father are one. This oneness through Jesus the Son fulfills God's purpose so that the joy of Jesus, John tells us in this gospel, may be made complete in us. What is this joy and how can Jesus be joyful, full of joy, the night before he knows he is going to die? Here, we might be reminded of what the psalmist says in these words from Psalm 30. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stand all night, but by morning, joy. God changed my mourning into dancing, the psalmist continues. You took off my funeral clothes and dressed me up in joy so that my whole being might sing praises to you and never stop. This joy, Jesus says earlier in this chapter from John 15, we heard this last week, abide in my love so that my joy may be made complete in you and that your joy may also be made complete. Joy is also one of the signs of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. It is the second of seven that Paul calls the fruit of the Spirit. As Paul writes in the letter to the Galatians, the Spirit's fruit keeps us safe and in right relationship with God and one another. Signs that we live in the oneness that Jesus is praying for. Signs of love, not selfishness. The acts that are produced by selfish nature are obvious. Since they include such things as doing whatever feels good, 
moral corruption, idolatry, hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, and other things like that. Paul warns, saying, I warn you that those who do these kinds of things will not inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit, Paul continues, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have already crucified the self with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit. Let's not become arrogant. Let's not make each other angry or be jealous of each other. That's from Galatians chapter 5. If we are being led by the Spirit, we can put into action this prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane because we believe in the truth of it. The truth of this prayer is this. Jesus is still alive. The Holy Spirit is breathed in us. We are one as Jesus and the Father are one. How we live out these deep truths is up to each of us. Jesus has not left us alone to do this. We have an advocate who intercedes just as Jesus has made his intercession for us in Gethsemane, that we are made one in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.